Molly, I know you like poetry and I'm a fan myself, but are you familiar with the work of William Ernest Henley, specifically one piece titled Invictus? You're a fan of poetry? Anthony, you're such a sports guy. I did not see that one coming. Hey, don't judge a book by its cover. But the reason I'm asking you about Invictus is because the last two lines of the poem are quite famous. They go, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I am is the motto of the Invictus Games, which will be held in Toronto in September of 2017. So you will be hearing and seeing those words around a lot as they gear up. Now, the Invictus Games I am familiar with. The foundation was established by Prince Harry in 2013 after a visit to the United States. The royal family member witnessed the Warrior Games and was inspired to create an expanded international version. At the opening night for Nui Blanche, the one-year countdown kicked off with an interactive installation. But first, we got a message from a very important ambassador of the Games. I am absolutely delighted to announce that the Invictus legacy will continue. And with that, Prince Harry announced the 2017 Invictus Games are coming to Toronto. Running from September 24th to the 30th, bringing together 550 veterans and active service members from 17 nations. They will compete and show their brawn in 12 adaptive sports. At the Invictus offices in downtown Toronto, CEO Michael Burns explained how having Prince Harry involved is invaluable. The Prince, uh, a lot of people won't know this, is uh, a veteran himself, uh, spent close to 10 years in the British Armed Forces, uh, multiple tours in Afghanistan. He was a helicopter uh, pilot. So he knows firsthand the challenges of military life. And of course, being in combat uh, knows the impact that it can have on uh, a soldier uh, and their families. One of the soldiers who has benefited from the games is Captain Simon Mayu of the Canadian Armed Forces. He's also one of the co-captains for Team Canada. In 2007, Simon had his left leg amputated after he was severely injured during an IED incident in Afghanistan. In 2009, he returned to Afghanistan, becoming the first Canadian amputee to deploy to a war zone. Samo explains the impact these games have had on him and his comrades. For me, it was very important because the game started not too long ago, uh, but they've been quite and very successful at bringing the veterans out, uh, healing, uh, showing what they've accomplished in their rehabilitation, but also showing that they can achieve more than even before their injuries, either mental or physical. Um, the games have been uh, uh, a driving force for heal. Symbolizing that recovery process for the competitors at Young Dundas Square is the I Am structure. 30 feet wide, made up of hundreds of yellow blocks on a black platform as if highlighting the letters I A M. Simon explains what the slogan means to the athletes, veterans, and service members participating in the games. It means unconquered, right? It means that your soul is not beaten up. Uh, your body may have had a beating, uh, you may have had problems mentally, uh, but you're unconquered still. With such a powerful message, it was a privilege to contribute by placing a brick of my own. That unconquered spirit doesn't begin and end with the games. Michael mentioned how the foundation will be building up to the games in some exciting ways. We're going to be engaging our youth across the country. We're going to be in more than 8,000 schools, partnering with We Day and the Rick Hansen Foundation. Uh, we're going to be launching a national torch relay that's going to visit uh, all 32 military bases across the country, neighboring towns and cities. So Canadians both here in Toronto and across the country are going to have an opportunity to participate. The installation set up here at Young and Dundas Square has a deep meaning for the competitors and those involved with the games. Michael mentioned how there is a strong historical relationship between art and military. That bond was reaffirmed through a live mural painted here as part of the celebration. The goal of artist David Arrigo's work is to reflect the various stages of military service. This piece here is going to be celebrating uh, basically the service, the injury, the recovery, and then the Invictus Games themselves. So it goes in a four-step manner, if you will. Uh, everything from like you know images of them in Afghanistan, and then the recovery of them with their families, and then building up and getting the spirit to get back into the games. David generously offered to take the microphone and give me the brush so I could contribute to the mural with his guidance. Look at the technique in this guy. There we go. 
He stuck within the line so far. Maybe you found it's a new tricky. calling. It's tricky keeping a steady hand. The fourth stage represented in the mural depicts service members and veterans recuperating and getting involved in the games. This message is important because it serves as a dual purpose, as Michael explains. Our hope is that it's not just going to impact the hundreds of competitors that are competing in these games, but it's going to inspire thousands more who today are struggling to get out of bed, who are having challenges in their relationships or at work, to say that if those men and women can do it, so can I. Sounds like Anthony had a great time at the event and like we have a lot to look forward to over the next year. Being only the third city to host the Invictus Games is a huge honor and I know that we as a city and a country will really get behind this event and show our support. It's just one of many to celebrate in 2017 as Canada marks the 150th anniversary of Confederation.